is the art of remix dying as a DJ in the heart of Nashville. I just can't help but wonder. Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Aaron. I'm a DJ based out of Nashville, Tennessee. I have a deep passion for remixes. I've even written a book on the philosophy of remixing and how it can transform original songs into something vast and varied. But lately, I've been feeling like the remix culture might be dying. Let's look into this together. There was a time when remixes ruled the airwaves. Iconic tracks like the Chucky remix of We Found Love from Rihanna. There was Tiesto's treatment of All of Me by John Legend. See, remixes allowed artists to experiment, innovate, and reach new audiences. In Nashville, the remix culture was alive and kicking. I've had the privilege of remixing tracks that set the dance floor on fire, but things seem to be changing. In my book, I dive into the philosophy of remixes. It's not about altering the track, it's about reimagining it. Remixes can breathe new life into songs, making them interesting and varied. But now we're starting to see signs that remixes are falling out of favor. Data shows an increase in remix releases, and streaming services often prioritize original tracks over remixes. The music industry is shifting. More artists are focusing on original content. Platforms like Spotify and Apple Music are designed to push original tracks, sometimes at the expense of remixes. Technology has also played a role. With advanced production tools and AI, creating original music is more accessible than ever. This shift in focus might be contributing to the decline of remixes. We've seen that people tend to prefer music that is familiar and invokes nostalgia. Preferences formed during adolescence often persist throughout adulthood. This leads many to favor the music of their youth or styles that are reminiscent of it. This inclination toward the familiar can limit the expectation of experimental or unconventional tracks. If you've grown up with a song all your life and suddenly it goes left field, your mind has a hard time processing that. We're also talking about the rise of streaming services and how that's dramatically changed how people consume music. These platforms often promote popular tracks and they create these algorithms that favor mainstream hits. This can lead to a homogenization of music tastes as people are continuously exposed to the same trending songs. Now more so than most, younger generations like Gen Z and Gen Alpha, they have diverse tastes, but they tend to lean more toward familiar and accessible music. Venue owners and DJs are facing economic pressures to attract large crowds. This often leads them to play it safe with well-known hits, this trend is reinforced by the need to appeal to a broad audience, ensuring that music played is widely accepted and enjoyed. As a result, the diversity of music can be sacrificed in favor of guaranteed crowd pleasers. There's also this cultural shift with younger audiences. They're now more influenced by social media and gaming platforms. These platforms often promote a blend of new and old tracks, leading to a unique but sometimes more conservative musical landscape. Additionally, there's a trend where older songs are reintroduced to younger audiences through media, leading to a resurgence of past hits rather than new experimental music. One example that comes up recently was the Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush, song that was uh, popular back in 1985, big hit in 2022 because of Netflix. There was that movie released back in 2024, Anyone But You, starring Sidney Sweeney. That movie brought back Natasha Bedingfield's Unwritten. Now, here's something that's quite literally mind-blowing. Research highlights that humans are wired to seek patterns and predictability, crucial for managing anxiety and ensuring survival. When exposed to unrecognizable music patterns and unpredictable tempos, it can trigger anxiety and disrupt our sense of security. This response is rooted in our evolutionary history, where recognizing and predicting patterns helped our ancestors avoid danger and find resources. Is the art of remixing truly dying, or is it simply evolving? As a DJ, it's really hard to see this change, but perhaps it's part of a larger evolution in music. I don't want to be the only one with an opinion here, so I posted this in a Facebook group of 100,000 DJs, and here's their response. SB Cutforth says, People want the original tracks to dance to. They are familiar to them. Remixes alter a track. Victor James says, Know your audience. Club vibe is pretty open. Older, country, Latin. Swifties, be careful. By that he means don't remix any Taylor Swift songs. Great advice from Mitch Taylor. Very well respected in the industry. He says this has always existed. People dance to what they know. 
When the remix starts drifting further and further away from the original, they drift further and further away from the dance floor or the door to the establishment. Michael Cataldi says, I still get great reactions to remixes and mashups at weddings. You just have to choose them wisely. There is a bunch of garbage out there. <laughs> Nick Grease says, TikTok brain people only want the main 15 second clip of the song they enjoy. And from our top contributor, Lou Paris, I think as with all music, it ebbs and flows. Most of my couples opt for originals, but they also appreciate my stems remixing into the next song. That seems to be an acceptable compromise. I wanna hear from you. Do you think remixes are dying? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you're passionate about remixes like I am, uh, check out my book for a deeper dive into their philosophy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more insights into the world of hacking and music. We are the Crate Hackers. Happy hacking.